Hey everyone, we are here today and we're going to do a basic walkthrough of Adobe After Effects. I'm currently running CS6, but if you're running CS5, it should look pretty close to what I'm doing here now. So right now, this is After Effects, uh, the basic layout. Just like all the Adobe products, I could go up here to my workspace and change it. You know, I could select animation and it tweaks it so you have more animation settings and so forth. Uh, so if your layout didn't look like mine was, just make sure you go up here to Workspace and select Standard. So in the Standard layout, we're going to start up here. These are your, your basic tools. Uh, the way the tools work in After Effects is they really only light up when you can use them. And since we don't have anything going on right now, they're all dim. So we'll get to those later. This right here is your project bin. Uh, this is when you import files, footage, any kind of assets. They always end up here. Uh, and that's pretty much all you use that for. Later, if we have effects or other things going on, you may have additional options and panels up here. But again, since nothing is happening right now, it, it's it's blank. Down to the bottom, this is our layers. Every time we, we have an asset and we add it to the project, it's going to show up in our layers. And this is just like layers in Photoshop or Illustrator. This long box here is our timeline. So the start of our project will be, you know, let's say hypothetically it's it's 30 seconds long. You know, this will be one second and this will be 30 seconds. Moving up and around, on this side we have our effects and presets. Um, the effects are things like adding lightning bolts, snow, rain, uh, particle elements, lightning effects, and all that kind of stuff. Next box up is our preview. We can kind of hit play. It'll render things out and allow us to preview the footage we've shot. And this very top box just lets us map our X and Y coordinates, which when you're doing animations in a 3D space can sometimes be really useful. And that's the basic walkthrough of the panels and that kind of stuff. To get started, well, even before we start in After Effects, we should start somewhere else. And what I've done is I've created a single folder on my desktop right here. It's called AE First Tutorial. And I've loaded it with just random pictures. In this case, I, I think they're all food photos. Yes, they're all food photos. And the reason why that's important is because the way After Effects works is that when you import a file into After Effects, the file doesn't actually get added. It's kind of like a placeholder. And, and it makes sense because let's say you have like, you know, uh, a 10 minute HD footage of someone and you're trying to add a motion graphic to it. Now that, that footage alone may be two or three gigs. And if you were to add those two or three gigs to the file, it means your After Effects file would become huge in just, you know, a matter of a few imports. So what you do is you're actually just kind of placing files into After Effects. And because of that, you want to make sure that you have your hierarchy of where you're going to store your footage and all that kind of stuff figured out ahead of time. So to import, you have two simple ways to do it. I can go to File, Import, and select my options here. Or honestly, the, the more simple way to do it is just right click in this box and select import. In my case, I'm going to select multiple files because I'm going to import all those photos at once. It's thinking about it. All right, so to import all these files, I'm going to select the top one. I'm going to hold shift, select them all, and click open. And these are all JPEGs, but they're pretty big JPEGs. Now, before we can actually get started, we have to create something that's called a composition. Uh, think of composition almost like as a, a semi-timeline. It's basically the space up here. To create a composition, I'm just going to right-click here and select New Composition. Or I can go up top and hit Composition, New Composition. The basic options for composition, I'm just going to call this um, AE First Tutorial. Most of these are all video settings. So if you're, if you're used to a video editor, these should make sense to you. And, and the reason why is although After Effects is meant for animating and motion graphics, at its core, it really is a video editor. And that's why what we're dealing with here are all video editor settings, uh, the presets. What you want to do is, is match your After Effects project with whatever footage or assets you're dealing with. Um, since we're not really dealing with video in this project right now it's not as important so I'm just going to select HD 1080 29.97 just a basic standard HD setting and then you can see here that the, the 1920 by 1080 
is the basic setting you see on the HD TVs. Square pixels, it gives you the frame rate options. Um, resolution, I don't have that much RAM right now on my computer, so I'm running it at a quarter. If you have a, a more powerful computer, you can run it higher. If you don't have a very powerful computer, you probably want something low like quarter. The time line, okay, or time code. So in this case, the automatic, the automatic default is 30 seconds for the timeline. Uh, let's say I didn't want that. I wanted to raise it to 40 seconds. Well, these two numbers here are your frames. And in this case, there, there's 29.97 frames per second. Here's your seconds. This is your minutes. And this last one is hour. So if I want to change it to 40 seconds, all I got to do is that. And it, it's pretty simple. Uh, background color. Let's go with something crazy. Let's go with this. It's like a, a fuchsia magenta color. Yeah, magenta. Click OK. And what it does is it creates the box, the composition. I'm going to zoom in just a little. To zoom in, all I did was use my mouse and I scrolled forward. I could use, also use the zoom tool up here. Uh, now that I'm looking at it, though, that magenta is kind of obnoxious. What do you guys think? Well, how do we fix that? I could come up here to Composition and select Composition Settings. Or I can come over here, right-click, and select Composition Settings. And those are the options we just saw a few minutes ago. So let's say... You started and you're like, oh, 40 seconds is long enough, and it isn't. You need it longer. You can just go into composition settings and change it. Or if you don't like the background color, well, we're going to go ahead and make it white. Nice and simple. Okay, okay. So now how do we get these objects over to here? Well, you want to come down to your timeline and decide, first of all, where do you want uh, an asset to show up? In this case, I probably want this to show up at the very start. So I'm just going to grab a random photo. I actually don't remember which ones are which. Um, what I can do is I can select them and it'll give me a little thumbnail. So that's eggnog, that's, that's a cake pop, those are whoopie pies, that's a, ooh, a Napoleon, Napoleon looks good, I think we should add Napoleon, so we're gonna add Napoleon. So I, I clicked the asset and dragged it down to my layers. So now, once that happened, you see the timeline got filled, and because this photo is a massive photo, it completely filled the frame. Which is good, because now I can show you how to resize things. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to scroll out and show you how not to resize things. Now, in most Adobe products, what I could do is hold the shift button, click the corner, and just drag it down. That doesn't work here. Uh, you can click it and drag it, but it doesn't, it doesn't lock it to keep the aspect ratio the same. So what I want to do is I just undid what I did is come over here, see this little arrow? Click down on the arrow. You see transform, click down transform. And these are the most basic settings you use to animate an object. In this case, what do you want to adjust? We want to adjust scale. One of these is X, one of these is Y. I honestly always forget which is which. Um, <laughs> but it's good in this case because we want them to stay the same anyway. And that's what that nice little link is for. So I'm gonna hover my mouse right over the number and see how it's kind of got like a pointer finger with a slider on it well if I click and drag I can adjust I think the technical term might be like chum slider or churn slider or something like that now if for some reason I didn't like the awesome feature of just being able to click and manually drag I could just click it once and type in so let's say I really want 40 and I was having trouble to get 40 boom Let me zoom in a little yeah Napoleon looks nice there it fills the frame so let's look at the timeline for a second, okay? Looking at the timeline, right now, it's, it's 40 seconds long, right? Because that's what we set the project up for. And in this case, when I dragged the photo to the timeline, it filled the timeline completely. So that when I scrub through, the photo's there from start to finish. I can easily change that. If I go to the end of, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to right click, rename, uh, Neo, just so I remember, enter. If I right click the end of my Neo layer, all right, see how you get that little another arrow again? If I click and drag, I'm trimming the clip. It looks like nothing happened other than just, oh, that bar moved. Well, when I move down the playhead, and I get to the end of that bar, oh, it goes away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's say I wanted it to, instead of showing up at the start, 
I can click this and drag it to the end. Now look, we have all this blank empty space and then, boop, it just shows up. Pretty simple, nothing fancy, just basic video editing. So if you've worked in Premiere, Final Cut, or even iMovie, uh, trimming and moving on the editor should make sense. If we are working with a larger product or need to get very specific with where I was editing on the timeline, I can use this down here to zoom in. So if you notice right here, we're at one second, two second, three second, four second. Well, when I zoom in, it breaks it down even smaller. So now I'm getting 15 frames, one second. One minute, 15 frames, two seconds. If I zoom in all the way, I'll get one frame, two frame, three frame, and, and so forth. And since, remember, this is uh, 29 frames, 29.997 frames per second, that's why we have right there. For what we're going to do today, we're just going to do a basic walkthrough of how to how to animate. So now that I have something on my timeline, I want to animate it. How do I animate it? Animating is really, really easy in After Effects. All you basically do is you set up what's called a keyframe, kind of like you take a picture, and then you move the object to somewhere else, take another picture, another keyframe, and After Effects says, oh, well, for the object to go from here to here, it must move in this way in the middle. What do I mean? Let me show you. So let's say the Napoleon, it's, it's back at the, the start. Yeah, it's back at the start. When the Napoleon comes on, I actually want the Napoleon to be, let's say over here off screen, right? If you notice as I'm sliding this, watch my position numbers. The positions move because the position of the photo is moving. If I click this little stopwatch, that's telling After Effects that we want to animate it. I'm going to click it, and it automatically adds a keyframe at where it is at the time. So then if I slide to the end, uh, 12 seconds, 12 seconds is kind of long. Let's just go with 6 seconds. At 6 seconds, I'm going to move it to the other side, and that dotted line in the middle shows you the, the path that the object is going to follow when it gets animated. I don't need to hit the stopwatch again because it's smart enough to know that I'm making the animation. And look, it has another keyframe. So that if I were to play through, the Napoleon moves across the screen. Pretty basic. Uh, let's say I really screwed up though, and that's not where I wanted it to end. Well, I can just come back through. I can zoom in to make sure I'm on the point, which I don't think I was. Yeah. Zoom it in on that keyframe, frame, and look, I can move it. Let's say I really want it to go like that. Well, look, it'll do that now. I don't want it to do that, because that looks really weird. In this case, anyway. So how do I preview? Well, if I go back to the start and I hit the space bar, it's going to give me a preview. It's not moving in real time, because it just doesn't. <laughs> uh, After Effects has to kind of do something called rendering. If you, once again, are familiar with video editing, rendering makes perfect sense to you. If not, um, basically think of it as your computer needs a kind of picture how this is going to look once it's put together, and it figures out the exact frames. So rendering is the computer saying, hey, this is what it's going to look like when it's done, and then it plays back in real time. So you need to render your compositions to watch them in real time. Um, in this case, I come over here to the preview. And right now I have RAM preview options, which means it'll, it'll render realistically. I'm going to hit play. It's not real time, and it's telling me it's not real time. Let's see. Play back. Hold on. Composition, preview, oh, I had audio check. So depending on how complicated um, what you're working on is, it, it may or may not work smoothly. It, it just kind of depends. Right now, this isn't a very high memory intensive project. You know, we're just sliding one photo across the screen. It's really not a big deal. Uh, if we were doing with particle effects and I had like 50 layers, which you can sometimes have, 
it might take a lot longer to render so you can actually see what it looks like. Uh, there have been times where I've been working on a project and just to watch a five second little snippet of it, I had to wait 30 minutes for it to properly preview. So it just depends. Uh, let's go ahead and add one more layer just so we can once again just do a little bit more animating. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, what's this one? Oh, cream puffs. Let's go with cream puffs. I like cream puffs. Drive the cream puffs down to my layer palette. If we notice right now, the cream puffs are taking the whole thing, right? And because the, the Napoleon is off the screen, see how that works? I'm just going to quickly scale the cream puffs down so they're not like confusing on what the heck it is. I'm going to move the position slightly. Notice I'm just using the slider to move the position. I, I could come over here and drag it, but since I was already down here anyway, I just went ahead with it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. If we watch it, it would slide across and it's like, oh, look, cream puffs are there again. Let's say I didn't want that though. Let's say I wanted it blank and I just wanted the cream puffs to come up after the Napoleon. Well, I can just go ahead and trim it. Something like that. And then obviously because we haven't animated this, it just pops on. Or what might be nice is maybe it's kind of like a, a white transition. So when the Napoleon is completely blocking the background, that's when the cream puffs appear. So that way when it slides away, it's like, oh my god, cream puffs are just magically there. See, watch. It's like, oh, and in this hat, I have nothing. But wait, I wave my cream puff, and oh, look, they appear. So you can get a lot of crazy fun stuff with this kind of thing. Uh, just basic, you know, transitions. If I wanted to animate the cream puff, you could do it the exact same way um, that we did with the Napoleon. In this case, let's say I wanted to animate, I don't know, the, the rotation. I can click the rotation at where I want the animation to start. I can move forward in the timeline. I'm just going to move two seconds. I'm going to grab my rotation slider and I'm going to spin it. Oh my God, it's spinning cream puffs. That is so crazy. And then when we go back and look at it, slides, spins. Whoa, insane. And that's pretty much it. These are, these are basic animations and... Although you're like, oh, position, scale, rotation, what can I do with those? You can actually do a lot of stuff with it. So make sure you play around and feel comfortable animating these things before we get to more complicated stuff in After Effects. So now that we have a basic animation, let's hypothetically say that we are happy and this is a beautiful project. Obviously, it's not a beautiful project, but let's just pretend it is. Let's pretend it's a beautiful project and then I want to go ahead and export it. Well, we go up here, do File, Export. And you need to add it to the render queue. And the render queue will give us the, the perfect preview of how it looks once rendered. So I'm going to select add to render queue. And the render queue pops up. And this can get really complicated depending on what you're doing. You know, if you're trying to make a DVD or something to stream to an HDTV, you're going to want specific settings. If you're going to upload it to YouTube, you might want specific settings. So for today, what we're going to do is, is just select the very basics. We're going to select uh, basic settings, best settings. We're going to go to lossless, and we're going to pick, no, we're not going to pick lossless. We're going to pick H264. It's, it's a, a compression that works pretty well. And we don't really need to mess with this stuff right now, so I'm just going to click render. You you have at least one item to render first. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a complete idiot. See how there's a check box here? I need to select the checkbox before it actually render. Okay, I get it. In order, you must set the destination. <sighs> it's basically saying that I didn't select where I wanted to say that. So I'm going to select my desktop. It's got the check mark. Render. There we go. It's going to render out. So it's rendering the file. And again, this could take sometimes hours. I had a, a, a promo video where I shot last year that was a minute long it took 18 hours to to render it out just because there was that much going on in it so many special effects and those kind of things so we're going to continue to just let this export and I'll, I'll continue to talk um so yeah it's a napoleon that's a cream puff uh both items were purchased at touch of italy bakery and restaurant in lewis delaware 
It's about 45 minutes away, and I was practicing food photography recently, which is why I have these random photos of food. Um, the cream puffs were very good. The polium was very good, though Though if I had to choose between the two, I would say the cream puffs were much, much better. All right, so now it's spinning, because remember we did a little spin thing. And after the spin, it should go really fast, because we didn't do any more animating. Yeah, see, look, it's like, it's like lightning. Okay, maybe not lightning. It's like... It's like something that's faster than really slow. It's not a turtle, but it's not a hare. It's something in the middle now. So we're waiting for it to render out. Uh, it's estimating that we're going to need three minutes. You know what? I don't feel like waiting three minutes, so I think we should just end this video now. But what this is going to do on my desktop, it'll go ahead and export just a traditional movie file. Yeah, it's saving as an MP4. MP4 is playable as the HD4 video h.264 video in most programs and web applications so that's the very basics of animating in after effects all right until next time i, I don't know do something all right bye guys